What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 video. Today, I've got this photorealistic Unreal Engine 5 Scott Spine Forest from Real Biomes to show you. Big thanks to Real Biomes for providing me with the asset for this showcase. The pine environment is insanely detailed. It uses 3D scanned assets and crazy high resolution textures up to 8K. With LiDAR landscapes and satellite imagery, it's a massive open world that stretches up to 64 kilometers. The workflow is totally procedural, and there is a dynamic wind system that moves the leaves around, plus a biome painter which allows easy biome creation. It even has a snow wall displacement feature for a realistic look at the seasons. Real Biomes also has a desert clays biome, which I will show you guys in another video. And they are currently working on an alpine spruce biome. You can find more about Real Biomes in the description. Alright, let's jump into the editor and take a closer look. Alright, as you can see, I'm here in the editor with the biome opened in the example map and <laughs> it looks absolutely spectacular. I mean, just look at this. This open world is huge, it's running super smooth at 80 FPS as you can see. I mean, I also need to mention that of course I have an RTX 4090, but the team has made a super good job on making sure that performance is on point with this huge open world. I mean. Look at this, wow, this looks amazing. The quality of this assets is spectacular, as you can see if I go here and zoom into the stream. We can really notice the 8K textures as I mentioned at the beginning of the video and also the photo scanned assets, right? I mean, overall I love how this looks, right? You can see the foliage interaction happening and everything is working super fine. I really love this. Now the best part that I want to show you guys is if I go here to the edge of the cliff okay and we have a view into the open world and I quickly just go and eject from the player and change my view mode from lit to nine eye triangles boom we get this beautiful view of the whole open world with all the triangles running which is absolutely amazing I mean look at this we can have a super high amount of triangles in the screen and because the biome is using nanite we can really take benefit of it so let's go ahead and go back to our lit mode so everything looks nice and beautiful as you can see all right so as you can see this map is absolutely massive right and we have different areas right we have this area which is more on the top side where we have you know more open kind of zones and then of course we got more dense zones over here or also down in this part over here, right? This part is super dense, but if we go more into here, we start to get a less dense zone, right? And we can really see that with a biome painter, which we will look a bit later, okay? But overall, as you can see, this biome is spectacular. We also have paths, which you can see, which you know breaks the foliage into two and looks really, really nice. And overall, we have a big open world to explore. I mean, I love how this looks over here. Now, the best part is that you can see that this has also many clips, right? To make the landscape, you know, harsh edges look nice rather than a stretched, you know, texture. Now, as you can see, these are individual clips, right? Of course, again, with Nanite. But the cool thing is that they did not manually place individually one by one all of these clips into their position. What they used was one of their workflows, which is to apply okay, clips into a spline. And that way they can build this big open world in less time, which is really cool. Now, a very important thing of this is the manager blueprint. So if I go up here and open up the BPRB manager, we can see all of the details over here, right? So first of all, we have optimization settings. As I mentioned at the start, they take optimization very seriously, and that's why we have easy to use parameters over here. As we can activate, you know, optimization parameters, we can optimize the opacity, we can enable or disable nanite, literally with a click of a button, instead of manually in the engine right clicking and waiting for you know all the assets to you know individually change their nanite we can also change the nanite quality from a drop down which is really cool and optimize shadows 
Now on top of that, we have wind settings, right? So if I go here and go to one of these trees, right? I can now just go and increase the wind speed over here and we start to get different parameters, right? So of course you can create a stormy kind of environment and so on, which they actually have a example map over here. Uh, I'm, I mean, just the default map, but they have for snow, for autumn and more ones. Now, if I go down, you can see that we have the autumn parameters and this will enable us to have seasons. Now, the thing is that we need to enable one thing on the shader in order to use this. So we will look at it a bit later. Okay. The same applies for the snow. We need to enable one thing on the shader. So again, we'll look at it a bit later in the video. Now, we also have options for the wetness, as you can see, to make things like more, you know, uh, rainy. We also have different options for the clouds and overall for the vegetation interaction, as we saw at the start, where I can go ahead and, you know, interact with the foliage as my player walks through them and we can change the bending radius, the transition speed and so on to essentially get the speed and the feeling that you want for this, right? And on top of that, we can change the snow visuals and so on, like the color, etc. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can go ahead and play around with snow and the autumn to essentially create seasons and so on in real time, which is really cool. So let's take a look at that. So for this, we need to enter in this material function called the MFRB snow, which will enable us to go ahead and activate snow. As you can see, when we open it up, we have this toggle which will enable us to toggle snow here on and off. Now, why is this disabled by default? Just for performance reasons, okay? Let's go ahead and enable this, apply, and now we would just need to wait until some little shaders compile, right? That's we're changing the material of pretty much all of the foliage over here. As you can see, it's <laughs> a big amount of shaders, but luckily my NASA computer will be able to kind of you know, run this pretty fast. And we need to do exactly the same thing with the autumn, okay? So we also have here autumn, right? And it's gonna be this one, which is the MFRB autumn. So if we open this up, again, we have a switch, which we can use enable over here, okay? So let's go ahead and use press here, press apply. And again, some shaders we will need to compile. So we will just need to be a bit patient. As you can see, we are dealing with a big environment over here. With a large quantity of assets so you have to have this in mind right when playing around okay you need a good hardware to run this okay they have all the specifications at the website which again i will link in the description but overall you know you need to have that in mind it is well very well optimized for what it is but still you need you know some gear to run it let's say all right so anyway let's go ahead and leave some time for you know all these shaders to Go ahead and load. Now, I'm not very patient, so I'm gonna start to actually play around, okay? <laughs> so, if I go here, okay, into the autumn section, which I think is over here, if we start to increase the amount, it will start to get a change in the leaves. As you can see, there we go. Build time instantly, right? If it was a bit choppy, this is because I'm compiling shares, but this should be super smooth, so we can really play around with this uh, while you play the game, which is really cool, right? As you can see, we created an autumn effect right for the environment again if it's choppy it's because you know it's loading some shaders and uh, you know it's gonna take a, a bit um we can also change the hue shift so we can essentially create really interesting colors you know i mean i mean look at this look how cool this looks wow this is pretty interesting doesn't look nice but <laughs> you, you get the idea right uh, we can also play around with this to make it like, more dry and so on and you know overall you can really create seasons with this. Now, the cool thing is that on top of that, we can add snow, right? So let's go down and we can see the snow distribution parameters. And I can just go ahead and start to add snow into the environment. And this is one of the coolest moments in this video, I think. I mean, look at this. <laughs> we have added snow to the whole environment and it looks amazing. Look how the whole open world changed. You know what I mean? Like, look, I'm gonna deactivate it again boom look at this and we can you know create gradual transitions because this is a nice slider that works in real time as i mentioned so this is really really cool i mean wow you can really create interesting results with this 
you know what i mean so yeah i mean this is what we have over here we can really play around a lot with the environment to get what we want you know we have seasons and we have a few other things on this now let's go ahead and look at the last thing on this video which is going to be the biome painter okay let's go ahead and look at that all right so let's look at how we can create our own environment using this biome with the biome painter okay so you can see i have already done this and this you know i was just testing and see how it works and it looks really cool so let's go ahead and just use this so i'm gonna go and create a blend new level and let me just create open world let me not save this and let's go and create this open world so i'm gonna use this base as a landscape all right, so the first thing we need to do is assign the landscape, um, you know, material to the, to the landscape, okay? So for this, I'm gonna go into the real biomes folder. I'm gonna go into materials, go into landscape, materials, and then we have this MI Pine landscape, which is a material instance. So I'm here I'm gonna select the landscape parent and just drag in the material, okay? As you can see, in a few seconds where this loads, all of the you know, landscape will go like glowing, you know what I'm saying? Now, the very first thing we need to do is open this material instance and make sure that the biome painter is enabled, okay? Which is what I'm going to do. And now that we have this enabled, we need to start to apply the layers. So for this, we need to go into the landscape mode in Unreal, go to the paint section, and then for the first ones, we need to start to assign the layers. So for forest grass, I'm gonna assign the layer that is already created. As you can see, now we have grass. Now the biome painter will allow us to kind of preview these biomes, which is the grass and so on. So essentially each layer is a biome. So I'm gonna also create one for the dry, for the mossy, and for example for the dead. Okay, cool. So with this now I can begin to actually paint. So I can essentially go to the grass and that's by default. So let me go to the dry and just create here a dry section, right? Which will be kind of like this. Okay, there we go. As you can see, which is really cool, the text will change to dry, right? And then I can go to mossy and create here the mossy section. And once again, this will change to mossy, which is really cool. So we're essentially using the biome painter with default Unreal Engine tools that, you know, real biomes use it in a very cool way to, you know, help us create biomes. Let's also create the dead section. And overall, we have now uh, four different vines. We have the grass, the dry, the mossy, and the dead. Cool. So with that done, uh, what we need to do is first of all drag in the material, uh, sorry, the material now, the blueprint manager into the level, which is the one that I showcased in the example layer where, you know, it has all of the parameters that we want to play around. Let's go to blueprint tools and drag in the BPRB manager into the level as you can see now we actually start to get grass where is grass we get this more dry parts where is dry this more mossy where is mossy and then this more dead where is dead right so we are essentially spawning different ones in different uh you know parts of here now in order to actually spawn all the main foliage as the trees and so on which are not done with the material itself what we need to do is go to the procedurals section go to pine go to the pine painter and now we can drag in all of this now make sure that on edit editor preferences if we search for foliage we have procedural foliage enabled okay if not just enable this and now we can essentially just drag in all of this into the level and then go and with the lock just change it to i don't know like 100 so it will cover this area okay as you can see in this box is where foliage will be spawned so now with all of them selected, I can go down, go into the procedural foliage section, load the unloaded areas, and just click on um, simulate. And now it will basically spawn all of the foliage in their appropriate biome, depending on the layer. Boom. <laughs> there we go. As you can see now, on the grass, we have some grass, right? Uh, also. I need to mention that it's only going to happen, of course, in this boundary, right? So outside, it's going to be purely grass. But inside, we have the default grass, right? Which is very open, as you can see. Then we have more dense on the dry. Then we have more dense on the mossy areas, as you can see. Because, you know, there's going to be more humidity. 
and then we have more on the dead which as you can see they are dead right so as you can see we are essentially going ahead and painting all of this which is really cool and if we were to make a change you know painting then you would need to simply go and re-simulate again as simple as that and once you're done going ahead and painting everything like that to get rid of the you know aiding we need to go back to the material instance and just disable the biome painter and as you can see now we go back we're good to go we see everything like this so essentially now i can just go and you know press play over here and just play the game like normal and the citation should load there we go and boom <laughs> we have created our own map with our own biomes using the biome painter which is really cool now it could look a bit better because uh, i don't have post processing like in their uh, example level but you get the idea i want to also mention i think i already said it but we have different maps with examples right so at the beginning i was in this example but we also have uh the one for storm we have for winter we have for sunny we have for sunset sunset winter and an overview and a template right so we have a lot of them uh the one i was using which is this example but you can see we have even storm and you know everything like that which is pretty pretty cool and that's it guys if you found this video interesting i would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel i have lots of unreal into five videos and tutorials so check them out join my discord server check out my patreon and you member for many benefits follow me on my socials and now yes with all i said bye bye